Next we're going to import another page. We're going to import page 12 this time. Page 12 gives us a few different options. It's very similar to what we've been looking at. What we can see that's slightly different is that our page 12 is a continuous waterproof finish. Let's delete one of these for now. Whereas this one only had a water-resistant uh, water edge. So it's had a, a sealed edge. This is for a water-resistant floor, not a waterproof floor. This one is a waterproof floor. Again, a timber-framed floor using Sky and Secura. And this is a waterproof floor using a concrete slab. So what we see, most importantly, which we'll talk about more later, is that when we do a concrete slab, it's much easier to create a set down, which mostly, apart from making it better for waterproofing, allows this junction here to work much, much better, where our relationship between our threshold from our bathroom side to our out, out of bathroom side, so we could call it our hallway, will more likely be flush because we're allowing for more fall on the floor. We're not going to have that advantage or that luxury and for us we don't even have carpet it's just a, a timber frame floor and it's not even a um, a composite or an engineered floor with a hardwood over it it's just a hardwood floor and that's one of again the realities of working with an older building the first thing we need to do is to scale this down so we see that this is a different scale to this how are we going to resize it it doesn't have dimensions this time let's use the same method, or it does, it has a dimension here. Uh, let's just use the drawing size and see if that helps. That's a faster way. We'll select it, edit, reshape, resize, press OK, click on this bottom point, click on the top, redefine that to there. Now we need to make sure that that is the same size. We saw before that the width of this was 75 millimeters. Again, that's the existing, not what I want to use. And when we measure this one, we get about the same thing. So it looks about right. Let's take this and explode it now. OK. And then realistically, we should then measure it again or resize it based on an exploded drawing, not an unexploded drawing. So we see that 74. So I was close, but not quite right. So let's do it again. Select, edit, reshape, resize, define graphically. And this time, I'll just do it backwards just so it's maybe clearer to see clicking on this point and then redefining that as 75. Now ideally that's going to be exactly the same. We may want to move it down so it's in line. So we're defining maybe that frame edge. And then that might make it a little bit easier to trace. So which one are we using? What am I getting at? In reality we're talking about a, a waterproof edge, is the, the detail that I'd like to work with you. And we're talking about, in terms of a, an internal versus an external, these are both internal, internally uh, sealed. Internally sealed. We're not talking about an exterior sealing. So we're going to use this one, but it, this one has a little bit more information, so that's why we started with this one. So let's take it as far as we can, but then we'll swap over. So we're going to switch back now to our bathroom details. Now the thickness of this flooring is either going to be 19 millimeters, so let's add an additional 3 millimeters, so it had it represented as probably about, let's measure it, about 15, yep, so it had it as 15 mil. Uh, the actual flooring, if we're using Secura, is 19 millimeters for a spacing of a stud, sorry, of a joist for 450 millimeters or 22 millimeters for 600 millimeter spacing. We're going to rely on this floor being 450 millimeter spacing, so we're going to keep this at 19 millimeters. So we can see again, we're starting to create quite a lot of differences between what we are drawing and 
uh, what we're copying, which is again one of the reasons why I like to use trace reference and create my own drawing rather than copying or using theirs. Right click, move, drag a copy. Let's drag this bottom plate down. Just trying to get my terminology right as I'm working. And we'll move this into place and we're not even going to change its size. Again, this floor might be different. We might be working with a 100 by 50 piece of hardwood, which is what it might be for this project. But in terms of keeping it simple, let's just base it on a 90 by 45. Let's just put that right in the middle, just for consistency's sake. And then in reality, if I was drawing this as a very long detail, I could drag a copy 450. And when we're talking about construction, we're generally talking in the word centers, meaning that we're saying from the center of to the center of is 450, not between the joists. Might just leave that there for now, just to remember. But most importantly at the moment, we're probably not needing to do that. We only need to see this junction, this corner detail at the moment. That's what we're focused on. All right. What's next? Assuming that this is a shower, we want to have a 1 in, I'm going to say, 50, 1 in 50 fall, not a 1 in 80 or 1 in 100 fall. And what we're probably seeing in this particular drawing is that we tend to, when we're drawing a detail, accentuate that fall anyway, just because it tends to make more sense. So this angle is approximately, let's say it's 177. And of course, another way of saying 177 is saying 3, because we're measuring from 180. So what's 3 degrees in a 1 in 100? How do we work that out? Let's, let's, let's measure it. A really nice way of working with CAD is actually just to draw. So we could say 1 millimeter, which is going to be very, very small. We might turn off true line weight just so we can see things better. And if we were to measure a horizontal line all the way out, where does it intersect? It intersects here. So 3 degrees, as is drawn in this detail, represents 1 in 19. So that's a very, very steeply pitched floor. We don't need a floor to be that steep. We're going to work at 1 in 50. How do we do that? The same way. So let's draw a line at 1 millimeter long. <laughs> that didn't work. Let's try that again. 1. And then a line 50 millimeters long and then connect the dots. What do we see? The, the angle of that floor, 178.85. If that's a little bit too confusing for you, just mirror it. And then you can read this coming from zero up to 1.15. So one in 50 is actually, that ratio fall is actually an angle of 1.15. That's all that we I would again suggest is good to have in a shower area, um, exceeding the minimum requirement of 1 in 100 or 1 in 80, depending on which sort of floor of the shower you are using, whether it's enclosed or unenclosed. All right, so let's take this one, mirror that one again so it's working in the right direction, move that into place. What I'm drawing might be a little bit random at the moment. Hopefully it's going to start to make a bit more sense later. Let's get our fill tool and I'm going to grab a different fill type this time. For now I'm going to use the one that's called brick cut because I'm going to have it representing porcelain. All right so we're drawing. I'm along this line Offsetting again, which is the reason why I like the rotator rectangle. And let's make the thickness of these tiles 10 millimeters. We could make this a lot thinner. Let's say it's a porcelain tile and it's a small one, so let's make it 5 millimeters. But of course, if we're working with stone, it's going to be much, much larger than that. And of course, how big is the tile? We can make that as big as we want. Maybe we're working with a tile that's 300 millimeters long. And I'm going to change this one to 
for now, let's just use this one. Just so it's a bit more vibrant. Okay. What's next? In order to create a, a waterproof membrane, we need to have something represented which sits on top of the fibre cement billboard, on top of the compressed fibre cement. That's our waterproofing line. How do we create that? What should that look like? If we're doing something like a, a sarking, we might use a dashed line like this. But when we're creating a waterproof membrane, we actually need to use something that's a little bit more detailed than that. And we want it to show as a... I've got one here called Vapor, which shows as these lines. So is that the best way? It's not the way that I actually like using it. Instead, the way that I do it is drawing a, again, a dashed line. Make that a very thick pen. Let's start with five. And then a solid line, let's make this two, and let's make this four, move, drag, copy, uh, four, and the outside lines are going to be solid and the internal line is going to be dashed, it's not quite in the middle. Let's move this to the middle. And we'll make the outside lines a little bit thinner. That's what I want my waterproof barrier to look like. Now what's the problem? Is it this thick in real life? Potentially, potentially not. One of the things we have to become accustomed to when we're drawing with detail is we're not necessarily always creating or drawing reality. Sometimes we're actually having to explode our details in order for them to visually represent correctly. One of the ways we can do that is just with thicker lines. But even then it may not give us the exact look that we're after. Move, mirror, copy. And I want to line the entire floor and the entire wall of this for now. So let's stretch this up. Edit, reshape, stretch. Reshape, stretch. And then I'm going to mirror these. And this isn't necessarily right, but I'm just going to start with this and then we'll talk about what's wrong and how we fix it in the next video. So we're starting to create our detail. Again, it may not actually use true millimeter dimensions, but it's a place to start. We're partly tracing, but then once I turn the trace on, we can see that that's not actually what's happening. There's something else happening here. And even if we look at this one, there's something else happening here. And so we're going to come back to this and talk about, well, what's actually happening? Why is that not what we are seeing? Why is that not very simple? Why is that not junctioning like this in real life? And how do we represent that? So we'll come back to that next.